This is hands down one of the coolest looking weapons in the game, but it's also the best bow, the best legendary bow that you will find in Baldur's Gate 3. So let's talk about how amazing this weapon is, what is this weapon going to give you, and why I love it so much. First and foremost, as you can see, the weapon itself, it just looks fantastic, it just looks amazing. You can turn on and off the glow of the weapon if you want to, so if you'd not like to be glowing around, you can turn that thing off. But also, let's talk about the traits that this thing is going to have, and the first one that I love the most is going to be Promised Victory. On a hit, possibly inflict, inflict Guiding Bolt upon the target. If you don't have that much of hit chance, if you're struggling that much, you're, you have your character focus on dealing damage, your damage rolls, but you don't actually have that much high, high hit chance because of shop shooter, for example, you do not have high ground. This thing is going to apply Guiding Bolt to the enemy, which basically is going to give you advantage against the targets that you are fighting against. Also, it is going to give you the Celestial Haste, which is basically haste, but this one, opposite to the potions, which last for 3 turns, if I am not mistaken, this is going to last for 5 turns, which is actually going to be amazing. It's going to be replenished after a long rest, so yeah, that is a thing. And then finally, out of all of the actions that this weapon has, I think that this is my favorite one, the Bolt of Celestial Light. And what this thing does is that it's going to add a flat 1d8 radiant damage to that specific hit. It's also going to frighten the enemy. But after you have used this thing for the first time, this is something that you want to use as soon as you start combat. As soon as you start, like, you, you finish up your long rest. This is like a buff that you want to apply to your weapon because it's going to give you a flat 1d4 radiant damage at all times. The first attack that you do with this thing is going to be a 1d8 radiant damage. And then after that, every single shot that you do with this weapon is going to be a 1d4 radiant damage. So that is why. I love this weapon so much. It has damage, it has haste, it has means of being able to increase your hit chance. It's just an overall amazing, amazing, amazing weapon. Now let's talk about how can we get this weapon. Like, like always, this is going to come from a quest that you will get on the third act of the game. I will do my best not to spoil this quest for you but uh, there are several outcomes uh, that you can have uh, to get this weapon don't worry if you didn't actually meet the requirements that were previously on the first act of the game you don't really have to worry about it uh, that much but uh, the first thing that this is going to link the quest line to be able to get this weapon is going to be able to find the iron fist gnomes on Baldur's Gate and first, you are going to encounter them as soon as you get inside here in Baldur's Gate and Rivenstone, uh, right here. This is the bridge that you need to cross to get to Baldur's Gate. This is going to be close to you, but you are going to receive hell from the Iron Hand Gnomes for the first time. This is not, by all means, not the only way that you can that you can have to enter Baldur's Gate, but it's something that uh, does needs to be considered because at the end of the day the quest line right here is going to be linked to the weapon so basically after you meet them right here you're going to have to come to this point right here which is just right uh, on the right side from the south span checkpoint where you first encounter them or, or receive their assistance there you will see that tunnel down there as soon as you enter the tunnel down there this that is going to lead you to the place where you can speak with them and they are going to require for you to do a very specific something that is a path that you can do to complete that quest line basically this is the quest line that is going to destroy the steel watch for uh on Baldur's gate possibly granting you a whole bunch of uh, possibilities and add a little bit of more easiness in traversing some of the main quest lines. This is not a main thing that you need to do, it's just something that is going to be available to you. Once that has been done, you are going to re be required to come right here, which is going to be the docks of the lower city of Baldur's Gate. I am not going to show you anything right there because I do not want to spoil anything for you. But basically, this is the path that you need to follow. This is the closest uh, fast travel point. Is It is going to be the Grey Harbor docks. There's going to be quite a bit of an issue for you to be able to get to this thing because this is a restricted area like always this is a, a world open 
full of possibilities that you can either do checks, you can either fight, there's many ways that you are going to be able to find your, your way right here. Just do have in mind that you do have to come through to this place and open that gate that I have, that, that it is right here. Open that gate, and through there, there's going to be the factory, you are the foundry, you are going to find the Gondians right here. This is where you can decide to either side with the Gondians or with the Iron Fists, provided that you did save them on the first act of the game. If you do decide to actually help the Gondians, what you are going to want to do is that they are going to require for you to explore a little bit better, but eventually it's going to request for you to find the, the remaining Gondians. And this is where you're going to find them. You have to come right here. Now this is kind of a tricky little thing because there's going to be a hidden entrance right here. Let me show you what it is. So this is just the right place that I just showed you. You have to go right inside here. And the hidden door is just going to be right here. There's going to be several boxes locking, locking this thing right here. But uh, yeah, you just have to move the boxes. You can move them really, really easy right here. Just uh, swap them to different places. That is going to give you access to the place that you need to go. And basically, at this point, you just have to follow the quest and you're good to go. At some point, you are going to have to fight a boss fight. That boss fight is going to be a big robot. It's going to be very easy for you to be able to... Uh, know which one are we speaking about and you can start doing this quest as soon as you start the act 3 of the game meaning that if you start the act 3 of the game uh, there's a whole bunch of hours open for you right now we're speaking about like 40 50 hours of content in Baldur's Gate so yeah you can do this thing as soon as you can to get the the access to the best bow that you have in the entire game. If you like the content, so like and super appreciate it. Now I'll tell you today that you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. I will be seeing you go them gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day and goodbye. <laughs>